Uh, as an Army Ranger uh, and as a paratrooper, I served uh, both in Iraq and Afghanistan. In both places, I worked very closely with local Iraqis and Afghani interpreters, contractors, and others, without whom I may not be here today, uh, and without whom we could not have accomplished our mission and done our work. I'm going to tell the story very briefly about a man named Mohammed, who spent the last 12 years helping U.S. forces in Afghanistan. Mohammed had applied for a special immigrant visa in 2010. He was denied repeatedly, uh, delays uh, stopped the uh, visa from being processed. Uh, in January 27th of this year, Mohammed was driving to work with his 10-year-old son when a Taliban vehicle stopped in front of him. Assassins jumped out and gunned him down in front of his son. All the while, those assassins yelled out, quote, where are the American forces to save you? Where are their helicopters? Where are their airplanes? You helped them for a decade. Where are they now? End quote. Muhammad is dead. A couple of weeks later, his eldest son received this death threat from the Taliban. He and many others like him will soon die unless we act. General McKinsey recently said that if directed to do so, the Department of Defense could successfully conduct an evacuation of at-risk populations out of the country. Mr. Helvey, do you agree with this assessment? If directed to do so, we could. Uh, who is the interagency lead for this issue, Mr. Helvey? We are working uh, with the with the interagency through the interagency process uh, to to look at the different options. There are different authorities, as you know. Uh, to address this. Is uh, there an interagency lead, Mr. Helvey? I would believe State Department would be the lead. Uh, do you believe or do you know? I believe, I believe that State Department would be the lead for so this. You don't know for sure? I do not know for sure. Uh, it depends on what we're talking about. If Mr. We're talk Helvey, we're several weeks into this drawdown. We have no time left. There are lives of Afghanistan's, our partners, people that we have an obligation to, not just a moral obligation, but a national security obligation. Uh, and you don't know who the interagency lead is. For the special immigrant visa program, the State Department's the lead, although, as you know, a lot of times the quotas are addressed through the National Defense Authorization Act. The mechanisms by which those Afghans could depart could depend on the, on the different circumstances. But State Department is the lead for the SIV. Mr. Helvey, would the establish, establishment of an interagency task force help expedite this process? I believe it would, and we are working with the National Security Council uh, to work through these issues, uh, having you know, interagency meetings multiple times a week uh, to address this specific question. And what does DOD need from Congress to help those over 18,000 Afghans who have applied for a special immigrant visa who are waiting on us right now? One of the things we would like to work in, and I do support the chairman's uh, you know, suggestion of increasing uh, resources for the special immigrant visa program. Uh, if I, I know that this is a very a, a time intensive effort, but certainly increasing the quotas uh, would, be a would be a, a, a tremendous help. And thank you, uh, Mr. Sure Helvey. Like thank you, Mr. Helvey. I would like to uh, yield the rest of my time to uh, Ms. Slotkin.